Okay, one of the things that we want to do is go over the uh, overall reliability of these units um, and dispel some of the myths that we've seen that, that seem to be, from what we've read, based on speculation and fear rather than actual experience or, or facts. One thing that I thought was really interesting that Carl reminded me of is these transmissions were developed by both Ford and GM, which means that they had to pass through more rigorous standards testing from both of those companies as opposed to just one company. So they were already kind of off to a, a better start than most new transmissions, if you will. Is that fair to say? Oh, it is fair to say, yeah. With two gatekeepers, essentially. Right. There's a lot of things that Ford might have let missed or GM might have missed, but they're both scrutinizing it. So it definitely improves the overall quality in the launch. And were there issues? Yes, there were issues. The CDF drum is the biggest one. The bushing can slide down after a while and um, eventually cut off the feed to the clutches or cause fluid to leak or go into the wrong clutch. Uh -huh. That's probably the number one issue with these. And Again, only seen in OEM applications up to this point because well, our system yeah. just was, was just released. Yeah, so exactly. So that's one of the reasons so. that we're getting all this information out there is so folks know what, what they're working with in the first place. Oh, yeah, they know what their limitations are. And these aren't, you know, problems that are going to break within five minutes. I mean, these are right. things that happen well out of warranty. Right. I believe the CDF drum problem doesn't crop up till about 100,000 miles. Now, in a high horsepower application, it might crop up sooner. That's entirely possible. But I feel that if you had a pre-2023 transmission, 2023 is when they started using the new CDF drum that essentially if it were low mileage, like this is a 15,000 mile transmission, this is a 2023 Silverado. I'm assuming it has the new CDF drum in it, it does not have the updated shell or crash can, as everybody calls it. Right. Um, because it's, you, you can see that with the valve body out, and we've had the valve body out of this for our, our 10 speed recall video that we did. Um, but yeah, they, Originally, it's natural aluminum color, and the they hard anodized the shell to prevent the clutch wear. And um, that's an update in later ones too. And hard anodizing is a process used in the aircraft industry a lot, since they are very aluminum intensive, and it provides a microscopic wear layer that will dramatically protect parts because it's much, much harder than the aluminum, the base metal. So that that will protect it and from what I'm hearing it does. But in some of the big ten speeds, which we are not yet supporting but plan to support 10 R140, 10 R1000. Yeah. I saw a video about this yesterday featuring one of the guys from Sonax. I think um, and he mentioned that, you know, in the big ten speeds, the shell even with the anodizing, will still wear if you've got like 38 inch tall tires and towing 30,000 pounds. Okay. You're really abusing the truck and pushing it beyond what it was originally meant to do. Then they see wear after a while. But, you know, it's nothing you wouldn't see in any other transmission under this. Yeah, as with anything situations. that you're pushing beyond what it was intended yeah. to do. So, whatever you go past right. the norm, then you're going to expect problems. I mean, if you build a a 1500 horsepower engine, things might break. You pay your money, you take your chances. And it's like that too. If you put a thousand horsepower through one of these, you know, same thing. I mean, you, you probably want to do some upgrades if you've got more than about six or 700 foot pounds going through one of these. And you want to use torque reduction too. Which we, we offer in the Quick 10. The Quick 10 oh yeah, is capable yeah. of torque reduction. We're definitely big fans of that feature. It's definitely helpful. Let me ask you this, Carl. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but any and all updates, hard part updates, things that customers should be concerned about with early units if they're shopping for one, like we're going to have all of that information on our website. Oh, soon. we are, yeah. And we've got a summary document that you can download or view on our website. It'll cover all these things in 
in detail too. Yeah. Essentially, if you get an older unit, like you know, 2018, 2019, don't be afraid of it. If it's got like 15,000 miles, like this one, it probably will go 100,000 miles before anything goes wrong. You know, if it's something you drive 50,000 miles a year, obviously you want to do the updates, but. You know, most hot rods aren't driven a whole lot, so right. you'll probably get an earlier unit and run it fine. But, you know, if you are running a 1,000 horsepower through one of these, there are aftermarket upgrades you want to do. And there's great aftermarket support for these things. There's lots of parts out there. Um, a lot of options for upgraded clutches and increasing clutch counts and stronger hard parts and things like that. So the Aftermarket support's excellent because these have been out for a while too. So, you know, we've been working on this project for years and building this new shop and stuff and a few other things that happened personally, you know, kind of delayed me in getting this done. But yeah, this has been my life's work for the last eight years on and off. And, and once again, you're not going to devote that kind of time and effort to something that you feel like is a piece of junk. So what, what do you say to all the folks out there who claim that it's overly complicated and that because it's got 10 speeds, there's just more stuff to break? We, we've heard well, that. Well, that's the keyboard warrior take, definitely. Yeah. But you take one of these apart, they're really not that complicated. The beauty of these modern transmissions, essentially most things six speed and up are clutch to clutch. Correct. So basically, the computer controls the shifts. The valve body is nothing but a bunch of pressure regulators. So they're PWM solenoids that use current, average current, to control the pressure coming out of the pressure regulator. Similar to what you'd have, you know, in some big hydraulic equipment like excavators and stuff, you know, where you're doing a lot of pressure control and things like that. But you you essentially command the pressure to each clutch. The old transmissions, the valve bodies were doing all the coordination of shifts, like applying and releasing clutches, and the electronics just commanded when a shift happens or what gear to be in. They didn't control the actual shift event and the timing of it and how much pressure's on this band while you're applying this clutch or vice versa. That was just all done in the valve, and valve bodies are, are good, but they're simple, and they couldn't adequately control that. Nothing that you've just said has anything to do with these new modern clutch, clutch they, they literally no. don't have any of those factors working against them. Well, the problem is, because you're using only clutches, because then you can just keep stacking elements, you apply this clutch for second gear, apply this for third, apply this for fourth, you just keep piling on more clutches, and the one-way clutch, which is either a roller, sprag clutch, or what they call a mechanical diode, it overruns after that shift occurs, so it just free spins. So what that means is, if you want engine braking in a four-speed in like first or second gear, you have to pull it down into the two or the one position. So paddle shifting almost never has engine braking unless you do some sort of valve body mod. So it's very limiting. Um, so going down hills, you have to yank the shifter down into two or one, and paddle shifting yeah. isn't really all that useful in those transmissions. People don't realize that, but because of that, too, there's actually additional parts required, not just a one-way clutch, which they can be kind of failure-prone, especially like AODs and 4SONYWs would tear out the intermediate one-way a lot, and they had, they had like three different revisions of those, and the mechanical diode was the best one, it was the latest one, 98 up. The end effect of that is you need something to override that one-way clutch for engine braking. So they have to add extra clutches and bands just for engine braking. So when you look at like a AOD for Sony W, going back to that one, there's six friction elements. There are four clutches and two bands. And the front band is, is the um, overdrive band. Right. It's also the intermediate band for manual second gear. And then the lower reverse clutch gives you the engine braking in first gear. This has six clutches in it and no bands because bands tend to, they tend to glaze and then they 
do a real bang, kind of a slide bang after a while. It's a really common thing with bands. So that's why all these clutch to clutch transmissions, are, there never are bands in them anymore. Is it fair to say that these new modern 10 speeds have actually less components in them well, than, they do. than, they than do. the older four speeds? A 4L80E and E4OD have seven friction elements. 4L80E has five clutches and two bands. Um, E4OD slash 4100 has six clutches and one band, and yeah. the band is just for manual two engine braking. That's right. all it does. So this, they have actually have more friction elements, clutches and bands, than this, which only has six clutches. Um, they also have extra one-way clutches. This does have a one-way clutch, and it's used basically in first and second gear. Yeah. And then when the two three shift happens, everything is totally clutch to clutch. But first and second gear, you can turn engine braking on or off. So like at light throttle cruising up to a traffic light, you know, in traffic, they don't turn that on because you don't need engine braking and it. It just makes the takeoff a lot smoother and the first few shifts. But of course, if you're going down a mountain road and you, if you're using paddle shift, then it does turn on engine braking. But the, the one-way clutch in these transmissions is just used to ease the coast down downshifts and to um, you know make it a little bit smoother in traffic and stuff. But well, you've you've just described and explained that these ten-speed automatic transmissions do not have; they are not overly complicated, and they do not have more parts to break, so to speak, as as we've heard people comment. Yeah, well, four speeds have two or three one-way clutches, like E4OD, 4100, 4 l 80 e all have three. And those are, those are big failure points in four speeds. They, they do go bad. So, yeah, well, it's fair to say that it's just not true what some folks have said about these. No, and if you count the parts count, I have a chart in the document you can download, linked in the description, that covers basically the unique pieces. Yeah. You know, we didn't count every single nut, bolt, and washer. Right. And like the pump assembly, we count as an assembly, but we went through all the exploded diagrams and got a rough piece count. And interestingly, we compared all the four speeds that we currently support, 4L60E, 4L80E, 4L70W, E4OD, 4L100, um, to this, the Ford and GM 10 speed, as well as the 6R80, which is roughly the same thing as a 6L80. I mean, the pieces don't fit, but if you put them apart on a table blindfolded, you probably couldn't tell the difference because they're both that same architecture, uh, which basically was licensed from ZF, the 6HP26. Um, but those are actually the simplest. There's like 152 pieces in a 6R80, and these have, I think, 182, 183, roughly between the Ford and GM. And then some of the four speeds have like 222 pieces. So that's a perfect example. Yeah. I mean, you're talking literally roughly 50 pieces, unique pieces more yeah. inside of an older four speed than one of these. So once again, just dispelling the rumor and the myth. Yeah, yeah. Well, People who don't build transmissions every day, they think, you know, it's got four more gears. It's got, you know, 80% more pieces. But the thing is, this thing is very optimized. Yeah. Extremely optimized. And there's no additional redundant components for engine braking because that's all kind of baked into the formula. Power flow in this thing is pretty ingenious. There's really nothing else like it. And they created a computer simulation and gave it parameters and gear ratios they wanted, you know, and it, they just worked through all the different permutations and came up with like, I can't remember, it was a few solutions that looked viable and then the engineers selected the one they thought was the best, easiest to implement, most cost effective, and that's how we got this. So yeah, it's it would take forever to figure this out by hand, so it just did all the math and all the different calculations and came up with the best options. Anybody that was doubting this or or hesitant 
to, to do a swap, I think you've helped relieve some of their concerns and that combined with all the documentation that we're going to have on our website, um, there's absolutely no reason not to use no, one of these no, transmissions. It, there's actually not, way more reasons to use one than, than there yeah. are any not to. <laughs> no, it's not excessively complicated. It's highly optimized and state of the art, you know, yeah. you use an overused term. No, it's, it really is kind of the best of all worlds.